So as we all know, Halo Reach came out about seven years ago, almost seven years. But you know, despite that, there's actually probably a few things that a lot of you may not have noticed before. Starting with the secret cut dialogue on a mission tip of the spear. So basically, if you turn on subtitles, and this happens a lot throughout Halo Reach and other Halo games, but you know, it's just something that a lot of you might have noticed. So in this case, I'm going to play the cutscene now and not talk, so just pay close attention to the subtitles. Dialogue in the subtitles, uh, George or Emil says, uh, time to bake the cake, but it's actually something else completely different. And like I said, this does occur uh, several times in other missions of Halo Reach. Uh, and in one case, the cut dialogue is actually still in the game files, but uh, never made it to the final game. So that's uh, one of the more interesting ones uh, as far as cut dialogue goes. Now, for the next thing you might have noticed for number 9 uh, is grass and space. So on this uh, particular firefight mission, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but if you um, switch to pan cam and you use pan cam to get out of the map, which we're about to do right now, and if you don't know how to use pan cam, um, you can probably look it up online. There's definitely uh, several tutorials for it. It's very easy to do it. Simple bunch of combination. But all you gotta do is just you know use pan cam and just uh, get out of the map here, out into space. And it'll take a second or two to get out, but it's pretty easy. So once you're out, you just lower the speed of pan cam so that you don't. It's easier to control, of course. And you want to fly to the other side of the ship, uh, the right side of the ship. Well, depending on which side you face. Uh, so just fly over here and fly backwards a little bit. It's kind of hard to see at first, but you'll eventually uh, see it kind of just. There it is, right here floating on the ground, or in space. It's a bunch of uh, grass textures, and a bunch of other shrubs and other uh, small plants. You know, just uh, looks like almost like an invisible mountain, uh, but it's, it's not solid or anything. It's just, you know, some floating grass textures out here. Now, I, I've been told that there's actually other stuff floating out here in space, like some trash and other... Uh, small objects around but I could not find them so those if you guys can find them those will be something that I never noticed <laughs> but um yeah so these these grass textures they kind of it's actually quite a big area out here so I I think maybe at some point early in development this is supposed to be like some kind of um land based map I, don't know, I guess they either scrapped it or just recycled it into a space map and I just forgot to remove the grass textures out here but that's uh yeah it's just something you can see out here you might be able to see it from inside the ship but it'd be pretty difficult to see it it's you know it's kind of dark out here and you have to see it through that shield door so I'm not sure if it's possible to see it from within the ship now for number eight the uh during the very first cutscene when Noble Six is um riding the Warthog you have to pay close attention to this helmet. But before we get to that cutscene, let me just show you my helmet. Uh, just so you'll see in a second why. But as you can see, I have the recon helmet. You know, it's a small visor, kind of thin visor. So let's start up the cutscene. So just remember that I have the recon helmet on. And with blue flames, but that's not important right now. <laughs> it's irrelevant. <laughs> uh, but during the cutscene, if you look inside the helmet as Noble Six uh, is holding it, uh, you will notice uh, something pretty interesting, and that is that no matter what visor you have, doesn't matter if you're recon or EVA or whatever, um, the inside of the helmet will always be the default helmet. Even though the outside might look like the outside will be, you know, recon or whatever armor you have, uh, and as you can see in this cutscene. Or any other Halo Reach cutscene, you'll always have, you know, your specific armor uh, pieces. But on the inside, uh, the helmet will always be the default helmet. And we will sh get to that in a second. But that is because, um, I guess they, 
it'd be too much trouble for them to, to model several helmets. So they only show um, they only show the inside once. So here it is, recon on the outside, but on the inside it's a regular visor. However, if you um, if you have the haunted helmet, uh, it'll still be the regular visor, but you'll be able to see part of the uh, the markings, like the uh, you know the goat scratched off face or the goat the ghost face on the inside, just a little bit. But you know, other than that, that's about it. Uh, the inside will always be the default helmet style for the visor, while the outside is actually uh, whatever helmet you have picked for your character. Now, for number seven, on the last mission of Halo Reach, the last, uh, well, not the last mission, but you know, the last part of the story before the credits, mission Pillar of Autumn, after you see Emil die, uh, I think it's stabbed by the elites, and you know you had to go uh, get on the mass driver to defend keys and pill the pillar bottom. If you check out the bodies next to the um, mass driver, you will notice something very interesting, which we will get to in just a second. So as you can see here, the dead elites, their shields are actually still active. And they actually even still recharge once you shoot them down. And it's the same with Emil too. Once you t take out his shields, they will recharge after a while. And all three bodies here are exactly the same. They can't be moved though. These bodies are pretty much like locked here. Uh, they have no physics to them basically. But no matter how much damage you do to them, uh, they, they won't actually die. And their shields will always recharge. So it's almost like they're playing dead, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think this is the only instance in any Halo game where uh, the bodies are actually still, uh, still, somewhat alive. See, they're still solid. If you try to walk over them, you kind of like, you don't face through them like you would normal dead bodies. So they're actually, you know, pretty, pretty solid objects. <laughs> so yeah. Now for number six. Uh, on the mission winter contingency at the very beginning as you are flying in on your falcon if you are quick enough at the beginning then you will notice if you run fast enough and you jump you will notice that the falcon the other falcon that's right in front of us right now is actually uh, not solid so there you have it my friend just jumped right through it it's easier for the second person because they actually get out first compared to uh, you uh, the host but you know, it's just simply not solid. You can walk through it, but bullets still um, impact it. Now for number five, this is actually a fun one to do, and it can actually be a pretty useful thing to do sometimes. But the target locator, as you can see, you only get a few shots with it, but you can actually hand it off to a marine. Now you normally can't do this. If you walk up to a marine with your target locator, it's not gonna ask you to swap weapons. But through a little trick similar to the one we've done in our uh, previous video about making AIs weaponless, if you if you um, swap uh, with like any other weapon like the BR um, the DMR and then you quickly switch to the target locator, you actually swap the um, the target locator instead, and the marine can actually use it. And when you get the marine, they actually get infinite ammo with the target locator, which is actually extremely helpful because you only get a few shots with it normally. That being said, um, it's unfortunately the Marine uh, doesn't doesn't really do much else with it. Because after this part, the Marine will just basically stand here and he won't, he or she won't do anything else. Uh, you know, at first we thought we could bring the Marine with us, you know, put them in the passenger seat of the Warthog, and wherever we drive, they can use the, tel the target locator to just take out all the enemies. But I suppose that would have been too easy and too too OP, basically. Uh, the Marine will never get into the Warthog. Or actually, the Troop will never get into the Warthog. But, yeah, no matter what, no matter what we do, they won't get into it. Instead, um, Cat will always try to get into it. So that's basically all you can do. Now for number four, uh, this is back on the mission of Winter Contingency. At the very end, if you bring a forklift with you into the uh, room, 
Well, not at the very end, but at the uh, the part where you have to defend Cat while she uh, tries to close that door. If you bring the forklift over here and you don't load the cutscene, but you go right past it instead, and you park it right here on the edge, you can actually uh, jump up onto the the uh, platform up here over the ceiling, and you can actually skip the cutscene. Well. You can prevent it from loading, but you can get into the cutscene area without it loading. It's a small cutscene area in this case, but you can actually uh, explore around just a little bit. But the most interesting part is the marine here, or the trooper, uh, the one that gets kidnapped by the elites as well as the girl. Uh, he's just sitting here the entire time, and he's invincible, totally invincible, can cannot be killed. Doesn't budge, doesn't do anything, doesn't even react when you shoot him. Like, he'll bleed a lot, but he's not going to say anything. He's not going to, you know, um, get mad at you for shooting at him either. So, that's uh, something pretty interesting there. Now, for number three. This is actually a pretty funny one. Uh, but on the mission Exodus, when the Falcons... This is, at, I think, one of the second rally points. But when the Falcons are coming in to uh, rescue the civilians, if you betray all your Marines... Uh, and you get the Falcons to turn against you. A, the civilians will all just be scattering around. But B, <laughs> this is the best part. The Falcons, they will actually shoot at the civilians. Or occasionally they will even try to shoot at each other. But right now here they are uh, shooting at the civilians. And they're actually managing to kill a few of them. I mean, the civilians are just as dumb for like running into the machine gun fire, but it's just pretty interesting that they'll actually target the civilians. And on some occasions, like I said, they'll even target each other uh, until the other one. Actually, both Falcons are invincible, so they can't blow each other up, but they will continuously shoot each other from time to time. Uh, and I don't think they'll ever become friendly, actually, either, because we, we stood here for a while just watching the uh, civilians scatter around and some of them get mowed down but they never turn friendly again uh, but you know this works best on legendary too which is why we died instantly here but the uh, the Falcons are much more accurate sh uh, shots on legendary so here we're gonna do it one more time uh, just to show you guys uh, this time the Falcons will shoot at each other but what I gotta do is just kill them the ODSTs here actually my bad <laughs> But once you get rid of them, then that's when the Falcons suddenly turn against you. And once again, the civilians just scatter around. So, here. I'm standing behind the glass for safety. But this time, the Falcons are shooting at each other. They're having a little shoot-off for some reason. See? They're just going after each other. And <laughs> it's still telling you to get on. Uh, we never actually tried to see what happens if we get on while they're uh, still shooting each other. I don't know, like, if it's gonna, like, <laughs> one of the Falcons will get shot down eventually, but... Uh, yeah, so that's basically something that's pretty interesting. Um, and you probably never knows that you could do that. Because usually when you betray your allies, they'll turn against you, not each other. Or civilians. But, you know, I, I guess they're like, you know, I can't take this anymore, so... Screw it, I'm just gonna shoot at the ne next thing I see. But, who knows? <laughs> So, for number two, we're almost there at number one. For number two, on the mission Long Night of Silas, towards the end when you're on the Covenant ship, um, when George flies in with the Pelican and he lands, you're supposed to, like, you know, defend him and clear all the enemies around and everything. And then you, you go ahead and clear more enemies, and you come back and you defend George while he, you know, gets the bomb ready and everything, etc. Uh, but let's let him in right now. And this is actually something that's really useful, especially if you're on Legendary, but we'll get to it in just a second. Uh, but it's best if you do this on co-op, um, only because uh, there's, there's a caveat to it. But basically, once the Pelican lands, you can get on the turret, the chain gun in, in the front not the one well there's no, none in the back but you can actually use the one in the front and it's 
pretty good tactic to use against enemies, especially on Legendary. Because once you're inside the turret, you are basically invincible. However, the caveat here is that in a lot of cases, you won't be able to see anything. So just be careful you shoot at. You're basically shooting blind. Now there are times uh, you can actually knock off the turret. As, as in like from the outside perspective the turret has been blown off. But you're still in it and you're still shooting like an invisible turret. Uh, but if you do that, you have to do that. I think, I think you can do it by like shooting at the ground or if you get shot at enough. It will eventually like reveal, you know, clear up your, um, your vision. And you'll be able to shoot much better like this. The turret's actually really really powerful. So if you're playing on legendary, it's definitely a good, good thing to use. Uh, but like I said, when you're shooting blind, you definitely need like someone else to help you, or to keep, you know, to shoot things that you can't see. But other than that, if you're playing solo, um, you could just you could hide in here and you can't, you won't get hurt. You're invincible. Uh, so it's definitely a really useful tool to use or useful weapon against the enemies. Yes, they can't kill you, but you can easily kill all of them. Now, if you get out, even though the turret's blown off, uh, other people can still get back in. And as you can see, they keep shooting and just look like they're shooting like an invisible turret. Now, for number one. And I'm calling this Out of the Galaxy because during the cutscene with the pillar with the pillar of autumn at the end when it arrives at the installation 04 once the camera pans here pay close attention to the background and I didn't notice this until recently but now that I notice it, it kind of bothers me a little bit but here in the background behind the pillar of autumn once it flies by any second now you will see that the Milky Way galaxy, the entire Milky Way galaxy, is in the background. Meaning, we are a very good distance away from the Milky Way galaxy. And basically, this cutscene implies that uh, Installation 04, Threshold, and the... Uh, I forgot what the name of the star system it's in was called, but... The entire star system is located outside the galaxy, which is... Totally not true. The only uh, Forerunner construct located outside the galaxy would be the uh, the Ark from Halo 3. But um, if you look at the other uh, older cutscenes from Halo Anniversary and in the second century the very original from the actual Halo CE. But if you look at all these cutscenes in the background you'll see part of the galaxy again but this time this is something that you would be more akin to what you see uh, if you were closer to the center of the galaxy so you don't see like the spiral arms of the Milky Way or anything you only see kind of like the center-ish part of it so this is kind of somewhere in the middle maybe closer to the center of the galaxy so you know this is definitely correct uh, you know it is not wrong like the Halo Reach one and then here is the very original Halo CE classic cutscene um, the camera angle is different, but you'll still be able to see much of the background. So there you have it. In this case, this one looks like we're much closer to the center of the galaxy. Uh, but see, definitely you don't see the entire, you know, spiral arms of the galaxy or anything. So that's something that's, um, it might be like a mistake in Halo Reach. Or, you know, just, um, an oversight. But basically... The Halo Reach cutscene is wrong. Installation 04 is not located outside of the galaxy. At least not until the events of Halo 3. But yeah, so I hope you guys found this video to be interesting. Um, you know, and you know, some of you might have noticed a lot of these things. Some of you might not have. But you know, if you did find it interesting, uh, make sure to leave a like. Um, leave your thoughts and comments. If there's anything else that we missed or other things that people might have, probably might not have noticed. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe because we've got bunch of videos coming out soon even though I'm on vacation at, at the time of this video being uploaded uh, but you know we make sure to prepare a bunch of other videos for you guys so make sure you stay tuned for those and we will see you guys next time